Hello and welcome to the Zebra BI's Actionable Intelligence, the future of data storytelling using Power BI, Office and AI. I'm totally excited today because we are going to see a session packed with live demos, best practice examples, product announcements by Zebra BI and for the very first time we are going to show Zebra AI um, a solution that will probably change the way how you do reporting, how you do presentations and data analysis in your companies. So hopefully uh, this will be an interesting session. Let's get started right away. I'm Andre, the founder and CEO at Zebra BI. I'm the IBCS certified consultant and a Microsoft MVP alumni member but uh, today I have four members of the Zebra BI team uh, with me, helping me conduct this session. So Tilan, Mark, Benjamin, Neja, please join me on the stage. <laughs> Let's say hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> All right, great. I mean, our great team has helped me prepare this session. Uh, we are going to touch on data storytelling in Power BI, uh, showing scenario, uh, uh, scenario analysis in Excel, showing modern interactive presentations in PowerPoint, and hope, hopefully also take a glimpse into the future of uh, reporting um, that artificial intelligence is going to shape uh that's what we believe in you know the years to come so uh that's why we feel that the transition is happening the transition from actionable reporting to actionable intelligence and hopefully today uh we'll be able to demonstrate our vision how this looks like uh, but also illustrate that with a couple of practical examples and demos because the future is already here now. The agenda for today, um, a quick word about actionable intelligence, um, then moving on to data storytelling with Zebra BI in Power BI, uh, then also um, um, in Excel and PowerPoint, and then finally, uh, the big reveal, Zebra AI demo for a very first time live uh, publicly. All right, uh, we'll share uh, resources and download links at the end and followed by a Q&A session at the end. So Mark will um, uh, track your, your questions. If you have any kind of questions or um, uh, comments during the session, please just type it in your in the chat uh, and our team will try to answer um, your questions right away, but then we'll take also additional time at the end of the session. We are recording this session, so it's going to be available on YouTube and we will send you the recording after the event along with useful resources, links and further material to dive into the topics we are covering today. All right, now I want to start since we are now right now in the middle of the planning session, I would say, um, I believe most of you are actually doing or at least updating your plans already for the next year for 2024. Um, so I just want to, you know, um, get back to this basic circle of, of reporting, um, you know, the, this spiral of reporting, planning, presenting, right? This is the, the, the you know, uh, the core process of analytics and reporting in practically every company, reporting, uh, covering, you know, dashboards, reports, and then planning with what, what if uh, analysis and so on. And then finally, of course, presenting, uh, presenting the insights um, that you have in meetings and so on, and then taking action. Uh, finally, and which is where actually the added value of the whole cycle um, is created, right, in the action, if those insights actually uh, spawn some 
concrete actions, uh, corrective measures, action steps, and, and so on, so that we learn on, on the analytics. And uh, this is where the actual value of analytics in general is created. So typically today, I would say, um, in most cases, of course, you know, you, you may be using different tools and the, the landscape, the BI landscape and the analytics landscape is actually quite, um, um, varies across different, you know, vendors and, and all that, but like an average, average, on average, I would say most of the reporting dashboarding is done in Power BI today. Um, for planning, what if ad hoc analysis, this is typically done still in Excel. So it's it's also many times uh, basically a parallel universe of Excel files and, and all that. And then um, for presenting, uh, still the predominant tool is uh, PowerPoint. However, um, however, of course, there are other tools as well. This would be maybe a median <laughs> picture, um, but um, basically also this functionality is being fused um for the last couple of years so a lot of presentations are done directly in tools like power bi or other tools um which is which is great um but uh the planning is also you know it can be in a separate tool or maybe a part of of power bi but uh still uh in most cases uh, it's done in excel um so uh, we'll talk about the whole cycle and we'll try to do this uh, session today with practical examples and tips and tricks that you can use, you know, to move swiftly, um, uh, uh, you know, across this, this circle and make sure that in the end you have a consistent um, system, consistent notation, um, consistent flow um you know moving seamlessly across the, those tools and follow the process around and make sure that you get the best of um uh, of all the worlds that you have uh in a consistent repeatable way uh and still follow you know one version of truth in the whole company and still have consistent understandable and actionable um you know products of your analysis all right now one thing is now still missing but is coming uh, and this is artificial intelligence uh that will probably change the way how these these processes um are conducted it will change the tools it will change the phases it will change the the, the works the operations uh it will change many things and this is what we are going to touch also today in our session so i just a couple of minutes um on reporting itself so basically last year in in june last year uh we released the actionable reporting manifesto um just you know preaching the value of clean and understandable dashboards and reports um you know uh, to get rid of the colorful and messy <laughs> landscape of of reports presentations dashboards um, that people typically have in their companies and um, are basically preventing end users uh, preventing business users from actually understanding the insights from the data um, and, you know, just simply lock the value of those in insights and prevent the actions, uh, the right actions being taken, right? So we have preached how, you know, colorful dashboards that are not understandable and not actionable um you know how to change them and we have provided a simple framework with four questions uh if you have a sales dashboard for example you know is your performance is your sales performance good or bad so this is the first criteria of a good dashboard you know if it can answer this very simple question right is my performance now good or bad can i understand that from from my dashboard in a couple of seconds right which these these dashboards uh, this dashboard uh, obviously fails at that i don't know you know if it's 
10% above the plan or below the plan or something, how good, how bad, you know, why has something happened? Do you get the explanation from a dashboard but once you're observing it? Do you understand what has happened, why it has happened, and do you understand what are you going to do about it? So does it suggest actions? Does it give you some advice, right, um, um, in, in, in the data that is presented here? Uh, so we have been preaching about clarity and consistency, right? Make uh, dashboards clean, understandable, and consistent across all the tools that you have in your company uh, so that you're using same shapes, same colors, uh, you know, clean charts, legible labels, and so on, you know, to make sure that your dashboards and reports are clean uh, and understandable, actionable. And this is what we define as a, a good report or dashboard, right? And just to sum this up, um, to repeat this basically from previous year, right? Uh, we have shown seven rules to achieve clarity, which is the right choice of charts. Basically, avoid you know high charts and 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 tree maps and uh, you know colorful charts that don't um, communicate the real situation the the changes the variances and and all that right so just replace those charts with clean actionable and understandable charts um you know where the information the data is presented in a consistent way in with a consistent notation almost like a sign language um like like a like a language uh, for data that you can understand right um, so this is also, you know, this is also one of the cornerstones, cornerstones of the Zebra BI visuals. This is why Zebra BI visuals uh, support the IBCS standard for business communication and so on. So this, this, this is like the first, the first recommendation, the right choice of charts. Um, then the second thing was proper labels, you know, our labels. Uh, legible are they properly displayed in, in in charts you know with proper precision and so on are they placed horizontally so that people can read them and and all that i mean it's it's just basics of of reporting so uh by using you know by having clean um horizontal labels that everybody can see the right precision you know the right density of the labels you can actually increase the density of your reports. You can have multiple charts, like 10 charts in my example here, plus two more, plus one more. So basically 13 charts, but it's clean and uh, you know you can people can read everything and so on. So the labels are important. Then we were talking about consistency in using colors, labels, and shapes. You know, if a color is used, you know, does it represent a meaning does it have the same meaning uh, if it's the same color right um, are the labels used consistently is it always the same label that everybody understands right even shapes if we have a column chart what does this what does this column this rectangle mean and so on right so uh, we have introduced the IBCS standard that solve this solves this problem uh, beautifully um where everything is consistent so that you have consistent colors that always mean the same you have consistent shapes uh you know a separate shape for uh, percentages uh a separate shape for millions of of, of revenue and so on uh, did you have consistent labels and so on uh, number four the variances like always display the variances, the changes, because the information lies with, the information is where the change is. If something is not expected, this is interesting, right? So you should display the variances um, uh, in, in your comparisons, make sure that people understand and that, that's, that this pops out, okay? Um, so that, that was number four, um, the attention of the user should be where 
you know plan was not achieved and so on in you know if if the variance is bigger there should be more red color if it's smaller less more, less red color and so on uh, number five bring commentary into your dashboards and reports okay um, so add qualitative information to your quantitative um tables charts and, and uh, quantitative data presented in tables and charts fuse the worlds together make sure that you add those comments ex as explanations that that actually add context and add understanding to the users that are basically consuming uh these dashboards and reports number sh number six was show forecasts you know not just look into the past but have forecasts embedded in your charts reports tables analysis presentations so that um, the end users will not just understand what has happened in the past right but even more importantly what is going to happen in the future or the you know until the rest of the year next year and so on so bring those forecasts in and we see some examples here we'll also show a couple more examples in demos and presentations later on and the last one maybe correct scaling you know uh, make sure that if multiple charts are presented that they are rendered to uh, the correct scale to the same scale so that people understand the relations between data categories right this is why here in this example uh this chart is bigger than this one why because the variables data category is 1.6 million and this one is you know 0 0.7 million right so, so it's uh half of that so i understand that the relations between the charts are preserved and um are according to the the actual relations in the data okay so this is very important um to unlock the understanding when users compare different categories with users compare elements that they see on uh their reports and dashboards okay so that was a year ago <laughs> so what's new um what has happened okay uh, well, several things have happened. Um, so first of all, uh, with the increasing uh, level of automation in the solutions, uh, especially, of course, in Zebra BI, but also in other BI tools, um, the focus is slowly shifting to data storytelling, right? Because in the future, most of the creation of, and generation of charts and, and, and dashboards will be automated. Okay, so what's left is basically for the users to add commentary, explain things, add those explanations to, to the dashboards, reports, and so on. So the focus will shift to data storytelling and, uh, you know, the, uh, the progress in AI will just accelerate that and has accelerated that uh, significantly, massively, and will continue to do that uh, in the next weeks month and years so with that um this is shaping also the development here in zebra bi um so with that i would like to invite our product manager senior product manager um for zebra bi neja who will demonstrate live um the new features of zebra bi visuals for Power BI and explain where we are going and why this is important. Yes, thank you, Andre. Um, please stop sharing so I can share my screen with my uh, Power BI reports. Just give me a quick second. Uh, this one will be the right window. And let's start with this one. Yeah, I think. I th I think it works. So uh, thank you, Andre, again, and welcome to everyone. And I think it's best if we just uh, dive in. So what's increasingly important, as Andre stated in business reporting, is that the user can create meaningful reports literally in seconds to save time then for actual analysis, discovering insights, and finding the value of the data. 
So first, I'm going to start with creating our Zebra BI cards visual. So I'm going to add actuals and previous year, I will add the KPIs to groups and to categories, I'm going to add the quarters here. So uh, in just a few clicks, I have created a nice cards visual with my KPIs that will help me with my next steps. So to prepare my dashboard further, I'm going to uh, increase the size of this tables visual. And in the tables visual, we want to show a product breakdown. So from my products table, I will add the product hierarchy to the categories. I will add the actual numbers and the previous year. And again, with just a few clicks, I have created uh, quite a meaningful table. So now just a little detail before we go. Further, I'm going to turn on the uh, grand total. So you can see that this table is already uh, very rich with data. We have uh, product categories with products listed beneath. We have uh, automatically calculated variances, so absolute and uh, relative. And uh, it's already a lot, but we can make it even better. So now I'm going to show you the uh, dynamic title feature. So we want our title to adjust to the KPIs that we select here. So for this purpose, I will bring to my visual the selected KPI measure. And now I have the option to go here in the title and I can start typing selected KPI by product and voila, now my title says revenue by product. And if I switch here to another uh, KPI, the title adjusts. So that's, uh, that's making it dynamic. As the next step, as you see here, if I have the revenue selected, the numbers are formatted in millions and thousands. And if I switch over to gross margin percent, I have decimal numbers, which is not ideal. I would like to have percentages here. Right. To achieve this, I'm going to use another brand new feature. So I will go to the settings and expand the data label and find the unit setting here. And I will switch it to Power BI. What this does is that now the visual starts reading the format of the uh, uh, numbers from the Power BI's data model. And because gross margin numbers are formatted as percentages, that's how they are uh, displayed here. So if I switch back to revenue, now it's in thousands and it's working beautifully. And let's uh, in add some context to this table of ours. So we have here again, if I ex expand my hierarchy, I have product categories and then products listed below. So those are the product names. And let's say I want to add now a little bit more context to this uh, product. So I can bring in the SKUs here to the values bucket. And this adds another column to my visual and I can move it here on the left. And now I have next to my product name, I have SKU column. This is our internal you know, stock ID. And for example, I can now switch the actual column to um, numeric values. I can also resize one of the columns here. Perhaps I can increase the size of this one if I want to, and I'm ready uh, for my next step. So. For this particular presentation, I will now remove the SKU because we want to have a little bit more space for me to show you something else. And here, if we're if we're looking at the products, right? If you if you now put your shoes, uh, if you put yourself in the shoes of your viewers, there might be a little bit too many products here. So what I will do is I will right click on the categories and I will choose this top, bottom and functionality. I want to apply it to the product, uh, to my products. I will select the top and filtered by my actuals. And let's say I want to show seven uh, products for each product category. And now again, you can see my others category was generated automatically. You know, all the numbers are calculated, the variances, and I can interact with it directly on the visual and it's working really nicely. And then let's bring this to another step further. So I will go to this plus button here on top and I will add something new as well, which is called quick calculations. 
And by clicking here on the percent of grand total, I get another column that is autom again automatically calculated directly on the visual. And if I expand it here, I can, it has also all the settings as the other columns, and I can change it, for example, chart type to uh, the pin chart. And perhaps I have changed my mind. I don't want to have the percent of grand total, and I can change it to percent of running total here. So uh, very nice. Now I have, you see, with uh, just a few clicks, I have created a very comprehensive table without any DAX formulas, without, uh, without fiddling in the data model. Everything was done on the visual, and it was done very quickly. So in this presentation, I have already used a few new features that aren't released yet, but uh, that are coming out soon. So the ones that I have used is the number format from model. I have used the dynamic title here. Then I have shown text measures with the SKU, the uh, column calculations here, and I have also shown you the new resizing of the columns. And now let's move to the next big thing. It's actually a new era for our Zebra BI visuals. Because you see, for reporters, it's not uh, enough anymore to just display the numbers and then allow the, view the viewers to get to their own conclusions. As a report designers, you need to become better at storytelling and focusing your viewers uh, on the important messages and conveying the insights. So at Zebra BI, we're introducing a new set of features to make this as easy and uh, dynamic as possible. So I will resize my charts uh, visual here. And let's create it quickly by adding actuals, previous year, then I want to add the months. And again, with a few clicks, I arrived to my uh, chart column visual. And to showcase this new feature, I will again add this selected KPI measure here to the filters bucket. You will see in a second why I have prepared this in this way. And now here is a new icon that launches something that we're calling annotation layer. So annotation layer is a set of features that you can use on the, on the charts and also they're coming in the tables as we will see. And you can add these comments and highlight areas on the fly without the write back to data model, even without access to uh, data model. You can do it on the service. You can do it in view mode as well. So let's see how it works. Here, I'm selecting the first feature. This is the comment marker. And I will add a new comment here to uh, October. And let me just briefly copy my um, comment content so I don't need to type it out. I will paste it here. And quickly, we have now uh, a comment added to the October category. And actually, it has been added to the revenue KPI. So if I now switch to a different KPI, let's say to a gross profit, the comment disappears. Why? Because I have told the charts visual that it should take into account the selected KPI for the annotation layer. So let's just uh, add another one perhaps here to July for gross profit. So I will copy this here. Again, the comment is pasted here. And I can confirm it. I can close the annotation layer. I'm satisfied with my with my comments. And you see, I can I can now click between the KPIs, and the comments are adjusting. And I can do this literally in in a few seconds before my board meeting, for example. It's much faster and very flexible. And now I'm moving over here to uh, my tables visual, and I will show you how another uh, annotation type works. So here I have area highlights. And for example, I want to showcase how this, uh, uh, how this product category performed. So I will just add the highlight like this. And you see it automatically, the area was drawn around the data points that I selected. So if I now reduce the number of products, you can see that the area highlight adjusts to my, to my selection. And even if I now collapse, the collapse, the product category, the area highlight adjusted accordingly. And again, if I now switch to 
um, gross profit, let's say, the area highlight disappeared because it took into account my filtered context. So um, that's it for my uh, first presentation. And we have seen now how easy it was to create a report, you know, with added calculations, additional text measures. But in reality, you will often have more complex cases and data. So uh, you might have, for example, my second case, it's the hierarchical uh, PNL statement. And in this case, I have already added some comments from our data model. So this is our existing commenting solution. Uh, but our comments are currently, you know, hidden in the hierarchy below. And those are some new comment indicators that show me there are comments present here, but they are hidden. So if I click here on the comment indicator, just with one click, the hierarchy expands to the level so that it reveals the comment that was hidden inside. So let's click again here on this one. Another comment is revealed and the last one here. So uh, this was very easy and straightforward. And let's say I'm now again pressed for time and I want to add some comments on the fly. So I will add another comment marker. I will click on this uh, icon here and I will add it to product revenue. Let me copy the content of, for the comment again. Just a quick second. Like this, I'm pasting it here. And this is on the lower level, right? And then I have another one that I want to copy, uh, that I want to add to uh, research and development. So let's click on the icon again, find the research and development row. And I'm pasting the comment here. And now just uh, for the sake of this demonstration, let's add another comment to uh, the operating expenses that are on the highest level. So you can truly see it works across all the levels of the hierarchy. And we're pasting it here, confirming. And now we have this, um, these comments added here. And now we can use these slicers on top. So I can switch to the balance sheet. And now I have the comments read from the data model. But my previous ones, the ones that I have added now on the fly, they have disappeared because I want them to just show, be shown on the PNL. And also I can switch to the cash flow. And back to PNL, I have them here. And now let's see if we now switch from March to April, the comments again disappeared due to this uh, filter context that I have set up here. And now in April, for example, I see that my operating expenses in April were actually lower than planned. So I want to uh, direct the viewer's attention to this area. So again, I will select the area highlight and I will um, pull it across these data points and I get this uh, area highlight drawn around the data points that I selected. And again, I can collapse this hierarchy and the area highlight adjust. So you have to know that these area highlights are also very flexible. You can draw them across different columns or across different uh, rows. And likewise, as for the comments, also, the uh, filter context works in the same way. So now that I have switched back to March, the area highlight disappear, disappeared. So uh, now, as you can see, Zebra BI is offering a comprehensive tool set for data storytelling from generating insightful visuals and then to adding and controlling additional calculations and finally adding these annotations and commenting. And as you can see, there are other annotation types coming out soon. So this truly enables you to get the right message across to your viewers and to draw their attention to the right data points and also explain your reasoning and your understanding in the comments. Thank you. And now let's go right back to Andre. Thank you so much, Deja. Um, that was quite insightful. Let me share back my screen. And uh, start my presentation here. All right. So 
sorry, need to skip this. I went out of my presentation mode uh, right there in a minute. So uh, just to quickly wrap this up. So um, thanks again, Neja, for the presentation. So you have seen, um, you know, our commitment to enabling users to create insightful visuals in seconds. Practically everything is out of the box. You don't need to touch any, um, uh, a lot of settings, uh, you know, you have consistent consistent notation all the variances uh, are calculated um and 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 displayed um completely automatically and very 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 fast right this is where you don't want to spend your time okay this is what tools should be doing for you and uh yeah we are just continuing uh on our mission um to delivering that um, and once you have your charts, your tables presented, you know, in a clear way uh, with all the variances and everything that is important, uh, nicely placed and aligned on the chart, uh, on, on, on a report page, for example, or a dashboard page, right, then you, started, you start adding context. So we have added um, text columns for that. Um, and then once you do that, um you continue by adding analytical insights you know that's why we are now adding quick calculations so you can quickly do an abc analysis by just simply clicking and selecting percent of you know running total um running total as a percent or uh, adding portfolio shares you know as a percent of grand total and so on so it's very easy completely straightforward out of the box directly on the visual so no dax was used you know you don't need to go back talk to your data modelers or it to prepare that for you you can do it yourself on the visual so that's completely self-service and then this is where the true um your major um you know where you actually add the most value i would say right when you start the data storytelling cycle by adding narratives to your dashboards, reports, analysis with quick commentary, as you have seen, the annotation layer will allow you to simply uh, add the comments directly on the visuals. Uh, so this is sort of similar to the write back, but actually it's better because it's without the actual write back. You can just do it directly on the visual. It is stored. It will remember the filter context and it will just work in Power BI, but also in Excel and also in PowerPoint, which is what we are going to uh, see next. Okay. Um, we have another short uh, presentation, another short live demo of, you know, augmenting your uh analysis with scenario planning in excel all right so office excel files powerpoint files it's sort of like a parallel universe people are doing many things with that but so that's why we just want to share a couple of best practices right once you have your data sets um in a tool like power bi then people should use them right reuse them in other tools right this is why um you know um Office offers uh, great new features. This is what Microsoft calls modern Excel, right? So use your Excel tables, use your pivot tables, connect them directly to your Power BI data sets. This is why, you know, the security and everything works. So let me just give you two quick examples of how you can do this uh, in, uh, how you can take advantage of that in Excel. All right. So, um, let me just start with a um, clean um, worksheet and I will insert, I'll insert a pivot table from Power BI. And I'll try to connect to exact same data set that Neja was using in the Power BI demo. So let me just find it. Financial event. We have lots of Power BI data sets here at Zero BI. So it should, it should find it in a second. All right. And oh, I was informed that I'm not 
sharing my screen. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Sorry about this. All right. I did a lot of talking anyway, so <laughs> uh, that was just in time. Uh, thanks so much, guys. Um, all right. Um, so I'm in Excel trying to connect to the exact same Power BI data set that Neja was using in the Power BI demo. All right. Um, so uh, you go to pivot table and select from Power BI. Uh, you get this side pane here and once again I'll, I'll just try to find the exact same data set um that we were using for this financial statements in power bi so you know it's a governance power data set power bi data set published the security is being checked because of course office knows that i'm andre you know it will check the, the security whether i have the rights uh, and 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 so on right and this will now be a live connection from excel to my power bi data set all right let's uh, check this one hopefully this is the right one and i'll insert a pivot table okay so this is this is going to create a pivot table voila uh that is connected directly to my um power bi data set so i have all the fields that were also used in, in the previous example i just see it here in the in off in my office let's add a couple of fields here so i have some accounts grouped accounts okay this is a sort of a financial financial statement uh actually those accounts uh, we have those accounts for cash flow and PL and balance sheets all in one nice data model so let's start with the PL here i'll add some uh, data measures so my actual data compared it to previous year probably also add a couple of filters quickly so let's add the year to my filter, month to my filter. Voila, so this is my pivot table. And the beauty of that is, you know, it's one version of the truth because this is now a pivot table connected directly to my Power BI. So it's going to be refreshed every time I open it and, and so on, or I click here, press refresh. Okay, now it's going back, bring, bring the same data in. So it's one version of truth. Okay, so that's the modern Excel. Don't copy things, don't export data export uh from your power bi and then import them via files and, and and so on connect directly all right uh now let me just switch this report into a tabular form and now what i'll do is all right now i'll use zebra bi for office voila and it's here um it has read the table and now it works in exact same way as we have seen in Power BI. Okay, that's great. So I have all of my accounts and so on. I can do a quick, you know, waterfall chart and all the features that uh, work in Power BI work also here. Uh, let's just change the sort order and my costs of goods sold. Uh, now I'm using out of the box calculation features of the Zebra BI tables. So I'll just invert uh, all the, you know, cost, all the expenses here under cost of goods sold. So now this is being subtracted. Uh, I will mark my gross margin as an intermediate result. And this is how I can build this uh, nice calculation um, in my PNL. Let's, let's just finish this. So operating expenses and resulting in my operating income then we have some other income okay this is uh, increasing this and this is now income before income taxes that's my next intermediate result provision for income taxes this should be inverted and finally my net income voila so basically i did exact same thing as in power bi and all the interactive features are now working so you can have a table view you can have you know more, more of a more of a um, um, visual view right and uh, you can do now basically the same thing in excel now okay why would you do why would you be doing exact same thing in excel this doesn't make any sense right just for reporting stick to your stick to your power bi however there are situations where you need to you know just where you just need 
much more flexibility, right? Situations where you need uh, to do some sort of ad hoc analysis that is not there, add some data, merge some data here, right? And for that, you have many options now going beyond this, okay? So first of all, you could just break your pivot table uh, into formulas, okay? So this would probably the you know be be like one of one of those tools uh, you can just use this one convert to formulas which will then break this pivot table into cell based formulas and then you can just add additional columns here and so on uh, add your data change something right um, uh, do some an uh, scenario analysis and it'll reflect in the table here okay but a better way to do that is using the method number two of linking your Excel to PowerPoint, which is exactly what I'm going to show you now. So let's once again connect to the exact same financial data set from our event. Okay, let's search for that. And this time I'm not going to create a pivot table, but I'll uh, instead I will create an Excel table. Okay, and I'll show you why, because this thing really works nicely. So for example, so this time you see, you have insert pivot table, now I'll click insert table. And this time I'll, this will create an Excel table. And you could just build this Excel table from a Power BI uh, data set here uh, in a very similar way. So let's search for our account group and account and add, the values, so the actual values, uh, values for previous year. Okay, so these are now my all of my accounts and the data. And now here, you also have the filters. Okay, so now I'll use the exact same filters that I've used in my pivot table. So let's find my report type. And I'll just filter this report type to PNL. So this should, voila, now I have only my PNL accounts here. I'll also bring in the year and the month. Should be here. So year. Let's filter that to my last year and also bring in the month. Okay, let's select. Uh, let's go for June. And I'll insert this table. Okay, what I got now is an Excel table that is connected live to my Power BI data set. And now this is slightly different to pivot tables because right now, let me just delete those ID columns. Uh, right now, I can uh, insert my Zebra table again. Okay, but what I can do now is now I can start my scenario planning, okay? So what I can do now is just leave this part of the table, you know, this part of the table connected to my Power BI. I, I can refresh it and all that. So it'll always have the, you know, the latest data. However, now I can simply add my new, my additional data here. Let's say we are planning now for the next year. So I'll have, you know, another plan here. And maybe another plan here. Just call them plan two and plan three. All right. And I can just simply, um, you know, start planning here. Okay. So let, let's do something really simple, like just uh, just create some numbers. Okay. Let's let's say that our plan is like uh, twenty percent. This is my first scenario. Just twenty percent growth from previous year. <laughs> something like that. Okay. Or, and then the second one will be like 30%. So just multiply this by 1.3. All right. And as you see here, now I have one table, but this part, this is my planning. All right. And it's all merged in the same table. I should probably, probably use different colors for this one. Okay. So this is, this is my plan like that and now i can refresh my left side which is like the actual data right and keep planning 
you know, different use different scenarios for planning here. I can change this many, many times because remember that cycle, uh, reporting, planning, and so on, right? This is, you know, this is just, it just goes in, in spirals, right? You have the first planning session and then you have, you know, uh, another uh, update of the plan and you know you start probably i don't know in, in august or september you know in some companies even earlier so you have maybe four you know planning sessions as your data um, uh, progresses towards the end of the year and you simply you know refresh this here and see how those scenarios would change and i have uh, a nice presentation also here in the Zebra BI visual, right, um, uh, where the changes changes to your plan are uh, are visible here. You have your plan numbers and actual numbers, and you know you can just simply uh, reorder the columns. So maybe you know put put your scenarios here. So this is these are our plan scenarios. This was the first plan. Let's just highlight it a little bit. So. Just use more or less the same color. Um, for that, all right. And then you have all your all of your variances. So this is actually the growth the previous year, and this is now you know what we have planned here. And of course now uh, you know any anything that you if you change some sort of expenses. Um, sure how many zeros probably too too little <laughs> what too much yeah like that so you know you're completely flexible and this is you know this is what then excel uh, can give you on top of you know your reporting uh, it's just mer it's just um, sort of um, leveraging the flexibility of, of excel for planning but still you know you have two things that are very important link to the exact same data set right so you have one ver version of truth and you have the consistency in your reports and presentations because you have the exact same presentation in your um uh, in your reports everywhere no matter which tool you are using right and this then results in a seamless uh, cross-platform experience uh that typically ends in PowerPoint actually. So um, to conclude this demo, we can just jump to, to a presentation. Now you need to present, uh, you know, now you go to a meeting and how do you create, you know, a quick presentation so that you don't waste your time for preparing slides, doing everything from scratch and, and, and so on, right? Um, hopefully you link everything to one presentation that is updatable, okay? And basically uh, there are two ways uh, of doing that today. Uh, the first one is just copying. Um, let me, first thing would be using, reusing the reports and dashboards that you have in your Power BI. So for example, this is my Power BI now, and you go open your report, open a page, and you export export this. Um, sorry, you share this uh, via PowerPoint. Just click here, and if you try to open this in PowerPoint, then Power BI will actually generate a slide for you with live uh, with a live embed of this report. So this Power BI report is now running inside your slide, and I can just you know. Cut and paste this into your presentation. Voila, so this is how would you actually create this and just, you know, new slide, paste this in and you're done. Now let me just show you uh, why the annotations are so important. Now this, now you can show this in a meeting show this in a meeting, everything is completely um, interactive, even in the view mode. You can expand the comments and so on. And you can even use the new functionality for commenting inside PowerPoint, okay? 
uh, just take a comment, take a comment and add a new comment, let's say to the operating income and you just type your, your comment here, okay? Edit and you can do this in a meeting. If somebody asks you or you ask somebody, you know, they will comment on it and you'll do this on the meeting while you're presenting in the present mode of the Power BI. So you can do this with uh, the Power, Power BI embeds or you use Zebra BI, uh, Zebra BI for PowerPoint, okay, which is also a part of Zebra BI for Office uh, offering and um, you just link your data, uh, link your data to exact same Excel file, and then you have a live uh, slide inside um, inside uh, PowerPoint that works really nicely, and uh, you know is completely uh, completely interactive. So you can start with um, you can start with. Uh, short PNL, for example, do the presentation and so on. And then if somebody asks further questions, you can do the drill down, you show the comments that are below, you know, operational expenses, and again, um, make comments, you know, um, create uh, additional comments. Uh, as the meeting progresses, uh, just write additional comments, uh, comments inside. And uh, yeah, this is, um, you know, a completely different flow from from what we have at the moment, where all the slides are being are static, being prepared in advance, and then nothing is changed. Um, um, you know, you cannot drill down, you cannot um, explain the data further with other interactive actions uh, that are basically a standard in all the BI tools. All right, now we need to uh, conclude this and let's jump on the, the last demo uh, that is going to be, I guess, uh, the most interesting and we are mostly exci most excited about today, which is Zebra AI uh, with uh, the development, with the latest development of AI uh, also our company is almost transitioning from Zebra BI to Zebra AI. Luckily, you know, from BI, B, the only letter up is A. <laughs> so that's what you get, Zebra AI. We call it actionable intelligence. And I will ask Beno, Benjamin, our Benjamin lead AI engineer to show us a demo and expose, um, show us for the very first time live in public what we are working on all right thank you so much andre um, let me just share the screen very quick okay all right perfect so hello also from my side i'm benjamin and i'm actually very excited to show you today for the first time ever a quick demo of the beta version of Zebra AI. So this is our upcoming AI-driven solution to data storytelling. So before we get started with the demo, I'd like to emphasize that Zebra AI is actually a standalone application. So it's not bound to Microsoft Power BI or Office or any other platform like our existing Zebra BI solutions. So it's a completely standalone service built from the ground up and it is actually running in the Microsoft Azure cloud servers and accessible via zebra-ai.com. All right, so let's get straight into the demo now. So the first thing that we immediately see is the application is asking us to connect or drop some data, which is exactly what we'll do. So just quickly regarding this data, it can be from any business domain like finance, HR, operations, marketing, and so on. But for this demo, we'll use some dummy data from company sales. So let me show you uh, what this data is going to look like. So it's actually going to be just a very simple, you know, one table uh, data set looking something like this. So this is just as an Excel file, one table with multiple columns and a few thousand rows, actually slightly less than 10,000 rows. Um, 
and the it has some columns like uh, you know the date. Uh, it has some categorical dimensions, and then it also has some uh, numerical measures of you know the sales and the gross margin and so on. So let's just immediately you know drop this data set into the application. Okay, perfect. So immediately what starts happening is the system will try to understand what's going on. And first of all, it will generate a summary. So, you know, this data set is from the sales domain. It's likely about sales data and so on. And what could be some interesting analysis. Um, then it's going to try to interpret the different columns that it's found in the data. And it's going to try to understand what those mean. And then it'll start actually performing various different data analyses, as you can see on the screen. Uh, using various statistical and AI-assisted algorithms, which try to search for some interesting patterns in the different slices of the data set. And so then the next step is going to be what we call explanation analysis, where the system tries to actually understand those patterns that it found in those interesting slices of data by actually drilling down. So you can see that right now. So it's trying to filter those interesting data points and it will try to analyze them over the other dimensions in the data set. It's going to try to understand why those patterns emerge. So this is what you just saw. And then the final step in this process is going to be actually planning the actual dashboard that is going to output with you know multiple charts. And this will start to appear soon. So let's just give it another moment or two to finish up. All right, that's it. So the whole dashboard was actually generated completely automatically, if you remember, from the moment that we just dropped the data in. So, you know, uh, advanced charts were generated, you know, all the variances were calculated, you know, different types of highlights were also generated, you know, single highlights, different highlights, trends as well. Um, and so on top of that, the system actually generated key messages for each chart in natural language. Um, it also generated a summary of the whole dashboard, and it even tries to give you some uh, business advice in terms of what might be sensible to look into next. So let's look at this output more closely. So, you know, in the top left, we got some time series plot uh, with uh, some trends detected in the top left. So, and then a few breakdowns of, you know, the sales. Uh, by different dimensions. Um, so we also immediately get the variances here in this plot. So all, you know, good practices of uh, business data visualization. So these results might actually be diff slightly different each time due to the nature of generative AI that we're using. Uh, and so, for example, in this other tab, you know, on the same data, we get a slightly different, uh, you know, dashboard with some other charts, for example, this waterfall chart right here. So, all right, so if we look at the actual results here, immediately what popped out to me, even in the previous dashboard, was this 0 010 women's category, which severely underperformed in terms of sales this year, you know, compared to last year. So I immediately asked myself, well, why did that happen? So how can I investigate further? Well, luckily this is, you know, as simple as asking, you know, the system through this, chat interface down at the bottom, you know, why this, 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 did this happen? Or what you might have noticed is I don't even have to write it uh, in the chat box because the system already generated a suggestion which is asking exactly what I want to know. So I can just click on this uh, question right here. And now the system will try to, again, interpret this question. It will try to perform the most relevant analysis using uh, tools it has available. And then it will finally try to formulate an answer based on those results and give you even some output in natural language as well as in charts again. So that's already happened. As we can see, you know, we are given an answer. So for example, you know, there are many reasons for, you know, for can be this performance drop can be attributed to many Factors, for example, you know, um, fashion's direct chain experienced a large drop, or the Q, the second quarter saw a huge decrease, and this is all supported by uh, the charts that are also visualized here. So you can see immediately, you know, if we zoom in a bit, 
maybe um, you can notice that the system has actually automatically performed filtering uh, by the relevant category. So by this uh, zero 10 women's and actually done a drill through and analyze all the other dimensions that it has available. Okay, so, and then finally, you know, once you have uh, finished with your analysis, the last step you want to do is obviously you want to share the results of this report with other stakeholders in your company. And so we're exploring different ways of sharing results. And we think that one great way would be if the system actually automatically created, you know, a PowerPoint presentation with just one click. So this is what we'll try now. If we click on this uh, export button, you know, uh, Zebra AI will automatically generate an entire PowerPoint slide deck for us. And let's actually try to open this presentation, you know, and we're immediately greeted with, you know, a title slide, which even has, you know, AI generated title and a complete executive summary or management summary of the whole report right here in the title slide. And then the other slides actually include, you know, the whole dashboards with all of the charts and even the whole chat context uh, right here in the notes. Um, and that is including, you know, all the business advice and the summary and so on. So with that, I would actually uh, conclude this quick demo and I'd like to give my word back to Andre. Thank you so much, Benjamin. Uh, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm biased, but uh, that was very, very impressive. Um, uh, so we are talking about complete automation of generating the dashboards, even, um, you know, attempts at explaining. So finding the insights and explaining them uh, in a completely automatic way. Um, and this is what we believe that, uh, you know, will be the future of uh, of, of reporting and of analysis. And, um, but let's, um, let's tackle a couple of questions, Benjamin. Um, so uh, we saw in the, in this demo here that you already had measures for previous year and so on as, as columns in your data set, right? So, so all of those measures were in the data set. Does this mean that uh, Zebra AI actually requires the users to prepare all of those uh, comments and I don't know, do the time, intelli time intelligence, uh, you know, in, in the files or can system actually work with more simple files and then try to yeah. uh, add that time intelligence? Yeah, so great, great question, Andre. So the short answer is yeah. So you don't actually need to perform this time intelligence beforehand. So let me actually show this on a different example. Uh, so this is the results on a slightly different data set. So this is a, a CSV file uh, also from the sales domain. You, you know, it has the date column as well for multiple years. So 2021 through 2023. And then uh, it has, again, some categorical dimensions and then only two numerical measures and none of which are, you know, obviously ex explicitly tagged as, you know, AC or previous year. Uh, and so what we can actually uh, see is that the system is able uh, to parse this data and perform this time intelligence in the background uh, completely automatically. And we can see that, you know, these charts actually uh, contain comparisons of actuals versus, you know, the previous year values. And even, you know, there's automatic filtering performed. Uh, and on top of that, the system actually creates the whole, a proper calendar dimension so that monthly or quarterly charts are also uh, being able to be drawn and displayed in the right sort order. Hey, wow. <laughs> so basically the complete um, data model is being uh, generated behind the scenes uh, with the proper calendar dimension, time intelligence and, 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 and so on. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I guess that's a, that's a huge time saver. I still remember um, the first time I tried to create, uh, create charts in, in uh, Power BI and then I needed to create my calendar dimension 
and then uh, I needed to figure out how to um, you know, sort, even sort the month in, in Power BI. So I needed DAX for that. I needed um, custom sort and, and and so on. So basically I needed to learn <laughs> at least some DAX and to create previous year measures and, and stuff like that. So that's all being done automatically now. Um, so a huge time saver, I guess. Um, so um, let's... Uh, Let's maybe uh, touch upon the hallucinations, Benjamin, because uh, we all know that uh, uh, AI um, AI methods are prone to hallucinations. So, you know, how do we ensure that what is produced here is credible, that the reasoning is um, on point, uh, so that, you know, system actually does not hallucinate with, you know, <laughs> critical business data that it actually provides credible results here that's uh, completely you know correct andre so hallucinations are still you know a major major concern in generative ai in general so we actually employ employ various strategies to tackle this issue so for all the drawn charts and uh, you know the data operations we use uh, strict logic and data ma manipulation algorithms and different statistical analysis and other tools to assure that the charts and the data are factual and not hallucinated. So in fact, if we click on this icon right here next to any of the charts, you know, we can see more details about that chart. So we can see actually all of the calculations, the groupings, the aggregations, and the filters that were, you know, performed in order to arrive to that final data slice, which was then, you know, visualized on the chart. Um, and then on the other hand, for the titles of the charts and the summaries and so on, we actually prompt the generative AI model with the selected statistics and chart results based on which uh, it tries to generate uh, a good output. So it's a combination. Uh, it's a basically a multi-level uh, agent that uses statistical analysis and uh, generative AI and other tools. Uh, in order to make sure that the reasoning is correct and the, a meaningful uh, result is is produced, um, yeah. The, um, let's touch also upon the the data set. So we have seen Excel uh, Excel files. It can work with Excel files. It can work with exported data to CSV files. But what about other data sources that people have, like um, RBI data de <laughs> data sets, obviously, but also other things like you know data data bricks and other data sources. Right. So currently, you know, as you said, in this beta version of Zebra AI, we support Excel and CSV files, and the data has to be in, you know, a single table, which has to be properly formatted. Uh, but we do plan to, you know, expand on this and support uh, multi-table data sets in the future. And as for data sources, you know, we'll also try to support many different ones, you know, but first of all, uh, the Power BI data sets, but then also connectors to different services, databases, you know, data lakes, data bricks, big query, and so on. And this is all going to be based on our clients' feedback and their requirements. Yeah, thanks, Beno. Uh, yeah, this is definitely coming in the future. So uh, we'll add Bobby I data sort data sets uh, and and other other data connectors basically. Uh, to the system. Um, uh, what about security, uh, Ben? I mean, let, let's talk about security because, um, yeah, many people are, are afraid of, you know, uh, afraid of AI, afraid of sharing, um, uh, you know, uh, afraid of using cloud solutions. So you you did mention that this is running in Microsoft Azure Cloud, right? But uh, you know, is the data secured or is it, uh, you know, used for training uh, AI models? Right. So first of all, we are absolutely not training any AI models with uh, the uploaded data, that's for sure. And secondly, uh, once you upload the data, it is only temporarily stored in a secure environment in the Microsoft Azure Cloud, so on our servers, and only for the duration of the session. So when the session ends, so if you, let's say, close the tab or you know refresh the page or even log out of the application, the data is immediately deleted from the servers. And so in other words, you know, the data is only used for this 
generating of the output and not even being stored uh, long term. All right, so it's secured and it only uh, it is only used to to generate the visuals, and then it's then it's deleted after the session is uh, concluded. Exactly. Uh, okay. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Benjamin. I mean, uh, maybe now it's time. We are pre pressed for time, I guess. So uh, uh, I want to get to the Q and A uh, as soon as possible. So let's share. Um, let's share our opt in uh, opt in page, maybe Benjamin, uh, because at this point we would like to invite everyone to participate in the beta program for Zebra AI. So as you as we have said, you know, this is a very early, uh, early version of the tool that, of course, we are going to develop further, but we are making it available for the first beta users. We have a wait list for that because there's a lot of interest. Uh, so I would like to invite everyone who is interested and would like to play around with the system and give us some feedback um, to go to uh, zebra ai.com slash waitlist uh, yeah like this okay and then here you can opt in uh, for the beta program okay so you you will get the access I mean we will we will uh, let we will let you know users eat in batches uh, but uh, you will be notified you know when, when it's your turn and uh, we would be really happy uh, if you do that, if you try that on, on you know, different data sources like HR, uh, HR sales, financial, operational, and so on, the system should work on, 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 on the different data sets, should cover all the business areas, basically. And we would like to learn from you. Um, very happy then to get your feedback uh, because we want to make sure that it really works with any kind of data and produces, you know, uh, the best possible results. Uh, so uh, cordially invited <laughs> to work with us and uh, help us uh, develop this further. All right, so, um, okay, uh, I think you can stop sharing now, Beno, and moving slowly to, um, moving quickly <laughs> to our, to the questions. All right, sharing back my screen. So. Just to wrap this part up, Zebra BI, we're about uh, making actionable intelligence easy. Okay, hopefully you've seen that today. Um, as mentioned, uh, cordially invited to join the Zebra AI waitlist. And um, also, um, you know, if you haven't tried our Zebra BI visuals yet, they are available on Microsoft App Source for Power BI, so just, you know, go to your Power BI, import visuals and search for Zebra. You will find Zebra BI tables, Zebra BI charts, Zebra BI cards, uh, exact same thing for Office, both in Excel and in PowerPoint. Uh, you simply go to uh, my add-ins and search for Zebra BI on the marketplace Add them. The basic version is free and then the advanced uh, uh, version with Pro features is uh, requires a, a license we build products people love so hopefully you will join uh you know uh, the companies that are using zebra bi to improve their business communication uh here are a couple of resources that we will also share uh share in the chat and uh in in the recording later on and now i guess it's time for your questions um i'd like to invite mark and everybody else that was helping that helped prepare me this session today uh to join me on the stage and let's take a couple of questions how was the discussion mark do we have some some questions that we can answer right now uh, i can't hear mark okay. no yes okay oh. perfect Yes, uh, absolutely. The, the chat really went alive with, with the last Zebra AI part. Of course, this is the, the yeah. big one. And yeah, so let, let's start with a rhetorical question, though. Uh, will Power BI developers still be needed after this? <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm still uh, um, uh, Will it be needed? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, the, of course, the tools will will, will uh, the tools will remain, um, but the processes will will change uh, for sure. Um, now, um, as you have seen, Zebra Zebra AI is um, a standalone um, a standalone service running in Microsoft Azure Cloud. It is not like a plugin for uh, for Power BI or something, uh, because you know uh, to run. Uh, to run those those uh, complex models, uh, you cannot do it like inside inside uh, Power BI. So it's definitely going to be a standalone application, but it's going to interact with Power BI. We are definitely supporting uh, Power BI data sets. So you, you will see this being added uh, very, very soon uh, in some of the next versions of Zebra AI. So there will be, you know, connections, but uh, I firmly believe that the generation of dashboards, like, you know, those early stages, as we mentioned, you know, just creating the visuals, planning out, planning out layouts of dashboards, uh, creating, finding insights uh, in, inside, um, trying to explain certain variances and, and important changes or um, outliers in your data. This is something that AI will definitely do in the future and will not be needed uh, and humans will not be needed for that anymore uh, and the focus of analysts of you know report designers and so on will go into data storytelling this is this is this is sort of our feeling our prediction and this is you know again this is exactly the reason why uh, we are adding those data storytelling features to Zebra BI and all of those features will then be will be <laughs> then brought into Zebra AI. This is something that we didn't uh, even mention, but uh, Zebra AI in the, one of the next versions will also have interactive charts. It will also have the ability to add your own comments to the ones that were generated by AI. So in the end, you know, you'll be able to personalize all of those dashboards. So, you know, AI will do the, the dirty work for you, <laughs> you know, generate uh, the dashboards and all that. And then you'll do, you know, you'll do the thinking part and the communication part and so on by adding your comments in, uh, in exactly the same way as Neja was, was showing and so on. And this will be then the core. And finally, maybe finally, this will be the time when, you know, <laughs> Uh, analysts, controllers, PNL professionals, and 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 all professionals in in those areas will actually do <laughs> be doing their their basic job, which is you know explaining, understanding, and explaining the data, working with the systems, and not copy pasting and fiddling with settings of of, of charts and 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 uh, trying to figure out some DAX formulas and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. And and while while we're still on on the AI side, I'll, I'll just ask a, a question here for Benjamin. So, so what are the data limits on on those initial? Um... Right. right. So currently, uh, currently there are no real explicit limits in the, in terms of you know data set sizes. Um, I think we limited the total upload size uh, of data sets to 50 megabytes, but uh, theoretically, you know, your tables could have hundreds of thousands or maybe even millions of rows. And uh, in terms of columns, uh, we've tested, uh, you know, tables with up to 30 uh, or around 30 columns. And, you know, it still uh, goes through the whole process nicely without any major or noticeable performance degradations. Um, so in terms of data set size, I think really there are no explicit limits here or especially not like the ones that are currently present in, you know, Power BI where there are explicit, you know, in terms of number of data points and so on. Okay, excellent. Um, one more question for Benjamin before we jump to to the other topics because we only have five more minutes left unfortunately but yeah um so what about like multi-table models how are they handled uh, can we handle this this now or is it something for plan for the future uh, right so um 
as we mentioned briefly, you know, so currently multi-table models are not uh, handled, but we already have ideas of how to, you know, uh, how to uh, support those. And uh, in the near future, we do plan to, you know, support all of those uh, multi-table models, especially since they are sort of a prerequisites for all the other types of uh, connections um, in terms of, you know, Power BI data sets and so on. Uh, so not currently available in this version. Uh, you still have to create one denormalized table from your multiple tables if you want to try it out on some multi-table data sets. Um, but soon, definitely, yes. Awesome. Uh, so last re related to the uh, AI questions. Um, so are there any plans to allow on-premise sort of in-house installs of Zebra BI? Maybe, Andre, you can take this one. Yeah, um, there are plans for that. We are definitely exploring those options um, because, yeah, we, we know that there are, you know, companies or even whole industries that would rather uh, run, you know, run uh, AI um, uh, AI algorithms uh, on premise and and not share um, are are not using uh, cloud cloud services uh, for their analytics for for various reasons, mostly security and so on. Uh, so we are looking into solutions uh, to deliver Zebra AI on prem. Okay, so there will be probably also. Um, uh, other other options for uh, enterprises like enterprise cloud, private clouds, and, and things like that, but also on-prem solutions. Um, we will um, we will have a more definite answer, I guess, early early next year uh, about this. Uh, you know, this field is 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 rapidly evolving, and uh, the models that are right now at this at this point today available. Uh, as uh, you know, um, uh, available uh, or would enable us to deliver an on-prem solutions are just not good enough in terms of the reasoning. Um, so right now, the first version is running in the cloud on Microsoft Azure, as we said, but definitely we are looking into that and we will definitely try to uh, get to a solution where the exact same thing will be uh, running inside you know inside a company uh, on premise excellent um, something for next year i guess <laughs> yeah and and there was there was uh, also a suggestion in in the chat so maybe maybe even host it on synapse or or within the fa fabric uh, instance right so yeah yeah definitely yeah, possible yeah. Options. yeah yeah now, there are multiple there, ways yeah we're running unfortunately a bit out of time so i don't want to get cut off but yeah there was a lot of interest about comments so maybe we can just uh, combine all the questions uh, in, into one so first of all where do the comments get stored and second if you write the comments in the power bi embedded report does it get stored back into the initial power power bi report right so when the report is embedded in powerpoint do the comments translate even there? Asia, I want to take this one. Uh, yes, sure. Uh, so yeah, the comments are, uh, the annotation comments are saved directly within the visual. So they are not written back to the data model. That's because we want to keep our uh, visuals certified by Microsoft and we are thus not allowed to write back to to the data model. So we are uh, simply saving the comments within uh, the visual itself. And um, in the future, you know, based on the uh, requests, uh, requests for improvements that we get from clients, we will enhance this, this feature. So you might perhaps be able to even export all those uh, comments that were added. You will be able to view all of them, even those that might be hidden because of the filter context and stuff like that. So uh, where the develop the future development of this feature goes depends on, on this um, request that we get from you. Okay, great answer. Uh, unfortunately, we will be ending the presentation in three seconds. So thank you everyone. <laughs>